We're going to be learning some of the basic tags within HTML, so I'm going to be using PSPAD as our editor because the color highlighting will make learning HTML tags a lot easier for you. And we're also going to be using Internet Explorer, but you can use any other web browser. There's a couple of neat features I want to show you about your web browser. First, let's get into looking at some basic tags that we're going to work with. And on the CP102 website, you'll find a file called caesars.doc. What I first want to do is just get ready and set up our computer so that we can have our web page open on one screen. And in the other window, we're going to have our notepad or PSPAD file where we're actually editing our HTML document. You can see here that I have PSPAD open and I've got a document that we had worked with previously. And it's already been saved to my HTML1 folder using the uh, sample.html name. I'm going to move into my web browser. And using the web browser, I'm going to open a new tab. And I've got my file menu already open, so I can choose File, Open. And I'm going to browse to my home directory where my iDrive, or my iDrive, which is where my sample.html file is sitting. And I'm going to open it up, and I can press on OK. So here's the original page that I have sitting now. I've changed it a little bit. We have our title at the beginning. We have the words and something in bold. Now, if I look back at PSPAD, you can see the structure of the page and how I've created it already. So we've got our HTML tag, we've got our head. Inside of the head tag, we have the title tag. And the title tag has been indented a little bit. And we want to make sure that we clearly use good indenting, and that's just using the tab key when we're typing our HTML document. And that makes the rest of our HTML tags easy to read. Now, you're probably going to find it easier to read, but if you're developing more web pages, then there's a chance that somebody else could be editing your pages after you've done with them. So you want to make them nicely readable by indenting inside or nested tags. So the title tag is nested inside the head tag, so it's been indented. The head tag is nested inside the HTML tag, so that's why it's been indented. And the head and the body of the document are on the same level, but they've also been indented from the outer HTML tag. So we've already covered some of the main tags. Of course, we have our HTML tag and the starting tag and the ending tag with the forward slash in front. And also the tags are ended in or enclosed in angle brackets. We've got the head tag, we've got the title tag, which is inside the head, and we also have the body tag. So these are the main tags required for every web page. You want to make sure they're in the right order, because if any of them are missing, that could change the way your web page gets displayed on different web browsers, or your entire web page could simply disappear from the browser, in which case you've probably just forgotten a slash or maybe one of the angle brackets. So here I've got my web page in Notepad. I've also got my web browser open, and it's got two tabs. There's my page, and I also have the CP102 Lab web page for HTML1. There's actually a file here called caesars.doc, and I want you to download caesars.doc, and you can do that by right-clicking and choose Save Target As. Make sure you save it to your home directory in your HTML1 folder, and then you can open it in Word. I've opened it up in Word. I've got Word 2007 here, and you can see that it's got some information that you'll want to read about creating web pages. I'm actually going to just scroll through this. You can make sure you read this on your own, and it talks about a couple of things that I'm going to cover. But I've actually got some tags in here that I'm going to copy and we're going to use as our web page. So on the bottom of page two, there's some, t well, on the bottom of page one, there are some tags here. And it goes all the way down to the middle of page two. And in the middle of page two, there's the second file, claudius.html. So I'm actually just going to copy the tags from this HTML document. And I can choose copy from my menu or hit control C. Now this tags, these tags have been copied to the Windows clipboard. I'm going to move to Notepad, or PSPad, and instead of having sample.html, I'm going to close my sample.html file, and I choose File, New. Again, it's going to choose, I'm going to choose an HTML file as my new file. Hit OK. It does have some basic tags here, and we recognize those already. I'm going to delete them, because I don't need them right now. And I'm going to hit Control v to paste in the tags that we have from our other document. Now, a couple of things here. You can see that the document is nicely indented. You can see that in PSPAD we already have these uh, we have these little blue arrows which are for word wrap and I can choose view and there's actually word wrap lines option. So if I take that off, you can see that the text actually scrolls all the way across and it'd be kind of hard to read that. So if you use Notepad, there's always a view word wrap lines or PSPAD it was viewing the word wraps. Uh, it was word wrapping for us automatically. 
Another thing you can see in this particular document is these HTML tags are in uppercase, but the standard now is to have tags in lowercase letters, and uh, they've really just been left in, HTML, or in uppercase so that you can more easily see them. So this is my page, and I have to save it into my CP102 folder in my HTML1 folder as a specific name, and you can see that it's actually going to save it with a .html extension, so I'm going to save it as menu, M-E-N-U, .html. So that's the name I want you to use too. So I save it. Now I'm going to go back to my web browser, and I can find the page that I hope had opened as sample.html, but I want to open a different page. So I'm going to go back to my file menu, choose open, browse to my home directory, and find menu.html. And here we have a display of our web page. This page is called the 12 Caesars by Suetonius. Now there's a couple of extra tags that have been added in here and I'm going to explain them. We can see that the title of the page is the 12 Caesars, but in the body of the document, which is the white area in your browser window, you'll see that we have in big letters the 12 Caesars by Suetonius, and we do have that in quotation marks. Now you don't always have to put, this is, this is called a heading, don't always put your headings in quotation marks. The 12 Caesars is actually the name of a book written by Suetonius, so that's why it's in quotation marks. Now a neat little trick I want, you to show, I want to show you is you can see how now this paragraph of text is actually three lines long, and when I looked at it in PSPAD, it was four or five lines long using the P tag, or the paragraph tag. Now you can see in, each, in PSPAD, when I click on one of the tags, it gets highlighted in cyan, it's kind of a blue-green color, and it matches the closing P or the paragraph tag. So we're going to look at that tag. And you can see that the entire paragraph has been highlighted in yellow for us. So again, these are some of the benefits of using uh, an HTML-based text editor like uh, PSPAD. It's, very, it's suitable for this kind of work. Now we were able to change that paragraph using Word Wrap, and if we look back at our web page, we have, of course we don't have an option under the View menu to choose Word Wrapping, but we notice that a web browser will automatically wrap text as long as the browser window is. So if I, if I change the size of my web browser, now that the, my web browser isn't taking up the whole uh, window, I, I still get three lines of text, but it actually breaks at a different line. This sentence ends at the word the, and if I simply scroll the, change the size of the window, then you'll see that the text will automatically word wrap to no matter how big my web browser is. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind, is that everybody will be using maybe a different browser or a different computer, and all at different screen resolutions when they look at your web page. So just because you want a line to end at a certain point doesn't mean that when you view it, when your visitors view it on your web page or in their web browser, that they won't, they probably won't see it the same way that you're expecting them to. That's one of the major uh, challenges of web design actually is cross-browser compatibility and making sure that their web pages look good no matter who's looking at it, depending on the computer or the browser or the, or the size of their screen, or maybe they're even using it on their cell phone and you still want to be able to have an effective web presence. Uh, created that way. So we're going to make some changes to our HTML document and the 12 Caesars page, and we're going to use the basic text formatting tags. So just as a quick overview, we're going to look at physical style tags. Then we're going to take a look at, well, the physical style tags involve the bold tag, which is the letter B for bold, I for italics, and U for underline. So we can change the physical style or the way the text looks. We could also use logical style tags, and I'm not going to cover it too much in depth, but you do need to know the difference between physical style tags and logical style tags. In a physical style tag, if I use bold, then the text will appear bold. Now with a logical style tag, I'm deciding whether I want some text to be emphasized with the EM tag, or whether I want a strong emphasis to be placed on this text. Now it's up to the user to actually edit this, but by default, Emphasized tags are in italics and strong emphasis appear in bold. So if you want to make sure that one text is strongly, more strongly emphasized than others, then use logical style tags. But if you want definitely some text to appear bold and some text to appear italics, then make sure you use the physical style tags for bold, italics, and underline. We'll also want to be editing the white space around our document, so we'll want to be using tags that will modify our paragraphs and line breaks. 
the P tag is used to create a paragraph of text, and you'll see that has a starting tag and an ending tag, and the P tag wraps around any paragraphs. Now, if you were to have text without paragraph tags, then they would no be, there would not be any spaces in between the tags, and you'd actually have all the text kind of smushed in together. So the importance of HTML is that we actually use these tags to control how the text appears inside the web browser. That's why we need tags. The, you can also see that we have a line break tag known as the break tag. So the BR tag is a little bit different. So there's no closing break tag, but you can see that there is a forward slash. And this is part of the newer standards in HTML, which is different than some of the older standards that might have been common about uh, 10 years ago when HTML became more popular for more and more people to learn. Finally, we'll want to be able to use some heading tags. So the heading tags will actually be used to control the logical structure of our document. So we have headings that will indicate topics and then subtopics. Heading 1 tags are the largest headings. H1 represents the heading 1 tag, and you can see that it starts with a, the normal H1 tag and it closes the ending H1 tag with a forward slash. There are six levels of headings, and they get smaller as you go down from heading 1 to heading 6. Let's take a look at some of these tags and put them to good use in our web page. I'm back here in my web page in my editor in PSPad, and you can see that this page already contains some of the tags that we've talked about, plus some extras. So in the first paragraph, I have the P tag, and it talks about this little bit of text. I'm actually going to use some of those text editing tags to change the way some of this text looks. So I'm going to find the word born in this paragraph, and I'm going to use the B tag. So B for bold. I'm going to, word, I'm going to bold the word born and the year he was born in. So we can clearly see that this is an important part of the document that we'd want people to pay attention to. Sometimes you might find that the uh, editor PS pad will automatically put in the closing angle brackets for you. So just pay attention to that. So we have born circa 8070. That's going to be a bold. And I'm going to have died as being placed in italics. So I'll put the word died in italics. And after the word died, then I want to put in my angle bracket. And you can see that PS pad has already put in the closing angle bracket for us. So I just put in slash I. And you can see that it's color coded as I begin typing a tag. You can see that if I just put in the slash, it's colored in red. That's because it's not a complete tag unless I put in the actual uh, full tag that I'm working with. So I tag for italics. And if I look at the word television, I could actually bold and underline the word television at the same time. So I'm going to use the bold tag. So from here, from everything from this point on will be bold but I'm also going to use the underline tag. So I put an underline. So now everything from here is going to be underlined and in bold. Now the secret technique to working with tags that are nested inside one another is that I actually have to close the underline tag first. So I have to turn off underlining and then I have to turn back off. I can turn bold off because it was the last tag that I had opened. So again, we see that this highlighting, the blue is highlighted telling us uh, which tags match, so I know that I've closed the tag properly, and I've closed the inner tag before I've closed the outer tag. So I've closed the underlining before I've closed the bold tags. So I've just hit Control S, which saves this document, and I can go back to my web browser, and I can take a look and see what this page looks like. Again, I've got my page open to the page that I had looked at earlier, and I don't see any of those changes because, of course, I have to refresh this into memory. And now that I've refreshed the web browser, I can see the word born, circa 8070 has been in bold. I can find the word died in its italics. And the word television is bold and underlined. So that's just one simple way to change the way some of the text looks. I've also included the bold tag. I'm actually going to put the word bold, or not the bold tag, I'm going to put the break tag under the word history, after the word history. So he composed a history. I'm going to put a BR right here and the br slash is the best way to close that tag so again the br tag doesn't have a starting and an ending tag because it just kind of sits there on the page but the way we want to make it a complete and proper tag is to have a br and then a space and then the closing angle bracket or the closing slash which indicates that the tag is over so i'm going to save that page again file save and now if i look at my web page i refresh it and now you see that after the word history, I get text that breaks onto the next line. And if I resize my browser window, 
no matter how small I make this web browser, then the word history will, after the word history, will always have a line break. So that's the use of the break tag. That's everything I wanted to cover in this video, but we have a lot more material to cover. So in the next video, we'll take a look at hyperlinks and lists of items.